Hello and welcome to Keeping Up With IDS. We're in week two of the course and last week was our Welcome to Intro to Data Science week. For those of you joining us this week uh, who have recently added the course on, I'd like to uh, encourage all of you to make sure you review all of these videos and anything else we have posted on the course website at Intro DS for week one. You didn't miss anything that was marked, but you missed lots of lots of important information. So please make sure to take the time to review them and if you have any questions, ask on um, Piazza for us. I'll also point out that some of these videos will have the suffix AE, which stands for application exercise. And those are times where I hope that you'll put aside the videos, go do some hands-on exercises in our studio cloud, and then come back. This will break up the monotony of videos and also give you an opportunity to practice things as you're learning them. Um, last week we also did a survey um, and there were some emerging themes from it that I want to address. On one of the questions in the survey I asked you about do you have any concerns about this course, uh, one common answer was no programming background. As I've said before, uh, this course is designed for people with uh, no programming background. So whether you've never coded before or you've never coded in R, this is still the right course for you. I know that some of you do have a programming background and that is perfectly fine as well. Based on experience of teaching this course for years and years, I can tell you that during the first few weeks, some of the concepts won't be new to those who have a programming background, but soon enough, we're going to diverge from your previous experiences and learn something new uh, that will be new to everybody in the course. Um, others have mentioned that the fact that this is a fully online course might be challenging, and I completely agree with you. I think one thing that's important to keep in mind is that a lot of the tooling in this course is designed for uh, kind of remote collaboration anyway, and also doing work um, online. So our Studio Cloud, for example, is where we're what we're going to be using for access to R, and we were going to be using that even if we could run this uh, class in person. Similarly, using GitHub for collaboration is an important learning goal of the course and something that would be part of the course even if we were doing things in person. Now, I think what might be challenging is the fact that we don't get to see each other uh, uh, on a weekly basis and I'm genuinely sad about that. And I think another thing that will be hard potentially is the teamwork aspect. I think we all know how to get in touch with each other online at this point. Um, so some things may, may not feel all that foreign, but it would be nice if teams could get together to work on some things together. So I will be providing as much guidance as possible to help you collaborate remotely with your teammates. And I think the most important thing is honesty about your schedules and also letting each other know if things need to change in terms of your schedules so that people aren't like waiting on a Zoom call thinking, where are my teammates? Um, another thing that got mentioned is uh, computer specs. Now, um, I think we are advantaged in the fact that we are using our Studio Cloud for our computing, which means that your computer computer specs are not that relevant to the code that you're running since you're running the code in a kind of a remote server. Um, but computer specs might uh, be relevant when we're thinking about things like you're going to need to be running Zoom and RStudio Cloud and maybe uh, some other stuff at the same time on your computer. Um, I think I a piece of advice that I often give students is that every once in a while restart your computer. Um, it can go a long way when things are starting to feel really, really laggy. I've certainly seen students in office hours with like 20 browser tabs open. Then they say nothing is loading. And once we do a, you know, a genuine restart to the computer, things come back together. Other questions you had, one was about team structure. So your teams will be assigned this week um, and I'm going to be looking at a few criteria. We're going to try to distribute the wealth in terms of prior computing experience or statistics or data science experience, but we're also going to, as much as possible, try to team you up with people who have something in common with you. I think that's a nice way to get any sort of teamwork started, but additionally, I hope that that might be useful when you're working on your projects, um, because you'll have some common interests, you might choose to find a data set that lines up with them. 
Um, in terms of the assessment, uh, the weights of the assessment are in the syllabus, and I encourage each of you to read the syllabus, so I'm not going to kind of list them here, but there are four main components to how your final grade will be uh, calculated. The homework assignments, which you'll be working on individually, the weekly quizzes, which you will also be working on individually, the computing labs, or otherwise the workshops, which you'll be working on in teams, and you're going to turn in a single report per team, and your project at the end of the semester which is also team-based as well. The whole team gets the score of that assignment. Um, we are going to be doing peer evaluations to make sure that everybody is contributing uh, roughly equally at least and that everybody is happy with how the work is being distributed among the team members. And if there are concerns about that, we'll try to address them. Um, another question was about AP Stats. Um, is this a course that's different from AP Stats? And absolutely yes. I think in the first week in the reading, you probably encountered words if you have taken AP Stats, some terminology that is covered in that course as well. Um, but quickly enough, we're going to diverge from the AP Statistics curriculum and uh, do more computing, more data visualization, more data wrangling. And instead of focusing a whole lot on statistical inference, we're going to be doing a lot more modeling and going well beyond the AP curriculum on the modeling aspect. And finally, a really, really nice question uh, was about let's talk about problems data science can help solve. So I'm not going to answer this question here in this video in the interest of time, but I hope that every single data set that we bring to class or every single case study will give you some idea about these and I'll make a note to explicitly mention the problems data science can help solve as we um, kind of cover these case studies and data sets. And materials, um, there was concern about the audio level of the videos in the first week. I completely understand. I apologize for that. I think the audio levels this week are a lot better. Um, so if you have any concerns about this week's videos in terms of audio level, let me know. It's my understanding that everyone could at least hear the videos last week. They were just kind of frustratingly um, quiet. So I'm not going to go back and re-record them, uh, but I will try to see if I can edit them a little bit better to increase the volume. Um, but I'm not a pro at kind of audio engineering, so I'm not sure. Um, if anything about the material from first week, if this becomes a kind of a, um, you know, a barrier to you being able to engage with the videos, please let me know. And if need be, I'll definitely re-record them as well. I added chapters to the YouTube video so you can hop around them a bit more easily now. I do recommend watching them in full the first time around, but I understand that when you come back to it, if you want to review something, I hope that those chapters will help. And subtitles, um, the subtitles are auto-generated. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're hilarious. I know in one of the videos it had really mangled my name uh, in a funny way, uh, which I fixed. Um, if you find egregious errors in the subtitles, uh, and especially if the fact that they're not perfect is getting in the way of your learning, please do let me know. If it's just a word here or there that's misspelled, but overall you are kind of getting a sense of, uh, you are able to follow the video, then I'd say we can let that go. But if at any point um, you feel like the subtitles are actually being a barrier to you learning from the videos, please let me know and let's see what we can do better. Uh, so this week is all about data visualization and um, the videos for this week are already posted. So I, enc I encourage you to start with those and also do the reading associated with it as well. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, why uh, to make data visualizations and also what sorts of data visualizations are appropriate for what sorts of variables. But we are also going to spend a bunch of time on actually building data visualizations with R and ggplot2. Next week will be all about data wrangling and then we'll come back to data visualization again the following week with what we've learned so that we can get back into that iterative process of data science that we talked about last week. The due dates for the um, week are here. Um, so Tuesday is when lab zero is due, but you really didn't have anything to turn in for that. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody goes through those steps by the end of the day today so that you're all set up for in terms of logistics for getting started with your work, especially for the workshop on Friday. Your uh, homework zero is due Thursday. This is not graded, but I encourage all of you to give it a try so you can get a sense of the workflow of working with 
with Git, GitHub, and also R in our studio. And I hope to see you all in class on Friday. And um, we have announced uh, student hours for the week. So David will be holding his on Tuesdays and I'll be holding mine on Wednesdays. So if you have any questions, those are a great place to just, uh, you know, pop in and say hi and ask them. If you happen to be free at the time um, and you just want to say hi, even if you don't have a question or you want to hear what others are asking, uh, feel free to join in the Zoom call as well. Um, and otherwise, Piazza is a great place to uh, ask all of your questions. And I know that some of your classmates have been answering each other as well. And that's really, really wonderful to see. So I encourage all of you to ask questions when you're stuck and also when possible help others as well. Have a good week and I'll see you in the workshop.